10 proven ways to get under 10% body fat. Hi, my name is Michael Diamonds. I'm a scientist and I majored in biochemistry and microbiology and I'm a medical doctor. In 2014 was the heaviest that ever been at the highest body fat percentage at roughly around 30% body fat or more. That same year, I decided enough was enough and got to my goal, but I couldn't lose that last lower bit of belly fat. I was doing everything, the caloric deficit, two hours of cardio, high intensity interval training, apple cider vinegar, you name it. I lost fat, but that last tire around my waist wouldn't disappear. It bothered me so much that I went down this rabbit hole to figure out why the lower belly fat is so stubborn. With the newfound knowledge, the next year, when I tried again, I did less work than the previous year and I lost it all. Here's my client Omar, and when he started with me, he was at 173 pounds and he completed his transformation at 161 pounds. As you can see, Omar didn't only lose body fat. Through the 10 proven methods that I'm gonna share with you in this video here, he was also able to build muscle and lose fat at the same time. Watch to the very end because one of these methods changed everything for Omar. So for you, it's either gonna be doing one or all of these 10 tips. That will be what changes your trajectory to finally getting you to reach your body fat goals. Let's kick it off. Step number one is being in a caloric deficit. You may or may not know that each and every single day, each and every single hour, you're gaining fat tissue and you're losing fat, depending on your eating and your fasting periods. If you're eating more energy, your body's gonna store that and do that for a day, two days, one month, three months, and six months, and you will see this fat accumulation occur if you're in a caloric surplus and do the complete opposite. If you're eating less energy than what your body needs, you will see that after a week, two weeks, one month, three months, and six months, months that you will lose fat tissue. So being in a caloric deficit consistently is the answer to being able to lose fat tissue. Now, how do we establish this caloric deficit? The best and easiest way I can recommend doing this is using artificial intelligence AI. All I want you to do is go to ChatGPT and insert this information. Tell the AI that you are the world's number one health and fitness expert and you want to figure out the appropriate caloric deficit to lose one pound of fat per week. That is what I recommend and that is what I highly recommend you do do not do any more because it will not be sustainable. And give the AI this information. Tell it your gender, tell it your age, your weight, your height, and how many times you plan on going to train, and tell it that you want to be in a caloric deficit. It will give you calories to be in a caloric deficit, and all you need to do is follow those calories. You can also tell it that you want to be able to have one gram of protein per pound of body weight, and you want 20% of your total calories to go towards fats, and the rest of it towards carbs, and it will also give you your macros. Simply put, you have now figured out what you need to be eating. You can take it to the next level and say, give me a meal plan with all the measurements based off of the macros above. And it will give you a desired meal plan and you can continue playing with the AI and it will give you exactly a diet plan that you can be able to follow. Because my clients meal prep their nutrition plan I gave them, they consistently stayed in a caloric deficit and it was easy. If you form this habit and meal prep for the next 16 weeks or more, you're more likely to finally get lean and finally get a six pack this transformation has truly been life-changing for Donnie. It's not about just losing the fat, it's about finally becoming the man you always wanted to be, a top 1% man. If you're ready to make the change, take responsibility for your life and your health, you're ready to get to 10% body fat, optimize your energy levels, and gain that supreme confidence, pause the video right now, scroll, and click the link where it says one-on-one -on -one coaching and fill out the application to work with me. Schedule your diagnostic call where we'll figure out what you need to do and we'll help you reach your goal. The next thing that I highly recommend doing is simply just taking the macros and inserting that into a calorie tracking app like Lose It or My Fitness Pal. And all you need to do is scan the barcodes of the meals that you're eating or search the meals that you're eating and making sure that you hit those calories. And all you need to do is you can just do that for one day and make sure you hit those calories accurately. You don't need to track again, but make sure you're eating all the meals that you're eating consistently at the same quantity that you measured on day one. This is exactly what I do. I track my meals for a day and then I repeat the same meals each and every single day. And I'm checking my results, I'm checking my weight in the photos. And if I'm seeing good progress, I continue doing it. The job's done. I don't need to stress about what I'm eating because I'm just eating and repeating the same foods. And research has shown that people and human beings really eat the same five to 10 meals the rest of their life. So all you need to do is figure out five to 
to 10 meals that will allow you to stay in a caloric deficit. And I highly recommend that you stay patient because most people give up too soon. And once you've figured it out, you'll see that it's so easy to do. Again, to recap, you can utilize the artificial intelligence and insert that information. I've put those prompts that you're seeing on your screen in the description down below. So you can literally go to the website, copy and paste that information and voila, there you have your info. But if you want me to take it a step further and me to do it for you for the next 24 hours, if you comment down below that information, I will give you the answers and I'll tell you, hey, this is exactly your calories and your macros that you should be eating. And I will be double checking it for you, making sure the AI is giving you exactly what you need. All you need to do is comment down below that exact information. And in return, I ask to leave the video with a gentle thumbs up. But once I figured out your diet, the next thing that I've utilized, that is a proven method that always gets me my results is intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting has been around before you or me. It is utilized in history. It is utilized in religion in terms of the Ramadan, if you're Muslim, or Lent in Christianity. But fasting has always been something that we've been doing in our entire life. And as you can see, fasting has never disappeared. It is not a fad. It works. It is extremely beneficial for the body overall. And for myself, throughout the decade that I've been doing this, and with all my clients, intermittent fasting in its one of the most powerful tools I utilize to be able to lose fat tissue and to get onto 10% body fat. Let me tell you how I utilize it. All you need to do is eat within an eight hour window period and fast for the rest. What this does inadvertently, let me show you this video that explains exactly what intermittent fasting does. This water bottle represents 5,000 calories. Cup one is a representation of you being able to eat the entire day. This represents fasting for 16 hours and eating in an eight hour window period. And this represents fasting for 18 hours and eating in a six hour window period. Now, as you can see, when you have the entire day, it becomes very, very easy to eat 5,000 calories. And you can go on and on and on and add that caloric intake. You will continuously gain weight. However, by simply just reducing your eating window period, you put much less calories into your body. And this is why everybody who starts fasting immediately starts seeing results because they've restricted their feeding according to time. And if you take it a step further, you'll see that you'll end up eating a little less calories overall. Consequently, as you can see, you've established a caloric deficit. Now this is a simple method. It is not a magic pill, but it is a simple method by restricting your caloric intake by time. And for most people, just because you make that limit, you're already putting yourself in a caloric deficit. It also gives you the option of eating a variety of foods and more options within that eight hour window period. And something that I personally do is I'll start with a 16, eight fast. And as I keep on increasing my deficit and I'm getting leaner, I'll move from 16, eight, after about two months and I'll go to 18.4. And as I get to the later stages where I'm starting to get really granular and seeing more details in my body, I'll even fast for 20 hours and then only eat within a four hour window period. And this is how I utilize intermittent fasting. So for example, you can have your first meal at 2 p.m. at eight hours to that, which means your last meal should be at 10 p.m. and you're fasting all the way until 2 p.m. And now it doesn't matter that you start at 2 p.m. every day. It can be at midday and you fast until 8 p.m. As long as you're following those rules consistently, it will make your entire journey so much easier. I emphasize this so much because I would never have been able to get my results without intermittent fasting. Step number three is eating a high protein diet. And when I say a high protein diet, I mean really high. Let me explain. Unless you have any pre-existing conditions, there is no negative side effect to eating more protein. So unless you don't have any issues with your liver or your kidney or anything like that, this is what eating more protein will do for you. Protein is the most satiating food that you'll eat. Have you ever noticed how full you get after eating a steak? It is because protein is so hard to digest and to break down that your body feels very full and it just takes so much longer. Compared to eating a packet of candy, you'll eat that candy, you'll feel great for about 30 minutes and you're hungry again because it's so easy for your body to break down the carbohydrates in the candy. So eat really high protein. How much am I talking here, Dr. Mike? At a minimum, I want you to give yourself one gram of protein per pound of body weight. So if you're 200 pounds, give yourself 200 grams of protein. If you're 250 pounds, give yourself 250. But if you want to take it to the next level and you want to make your whole dieting process more easier, 
I sometimes go as high as giving myself 1.3 grams of protein per pound of body weight. So you take 200 pounds and you multiply that by 1.3. The second benefit of having a high protein diet, besides feeling satiated, is that it takes your body the most amount of energy to break it down. So you burn more calories by eating more protein, meaning that you're boosting your metabolism because you're taking so much energy to break down all that protein. So another thing is that it has the highest thermic effect of food and that's exactly what I've described. It will help you tremendously by boosting your metabolism. And the final thing, we know that protein and breaking down the protein into amino acids is the building block of building muscle. You will notice that the more protein you're eating, the more muscle you'll build. And let's say you gain an extra five to 10 pounds of muscle tissue over the next couple of months because you're eating more protein. Consequently, you're dropping your body fat. We only don't want to drop body fat. We want to build muscle. And this is exactly one of the things that my client Omar did is that I boosted his protein intake and he was able to cap his shoulders, add the clay to his shoulders, add the clay to his biceps, add the clay to his abs. And that's why I was able to build so much more muscle. It's because he was eating more protein. So a quick recap. Number one, it will boost your metabolism through the thermic effect of food. Number two is that it will help you build more muscle as it is the building block of building muscle. And number three, eating more protein will keep you fuller for longer. And with a lot of clients, I have noticed that it actually puts them in a caloric deficit because they just don't want to eat as much more compared to when they're eating less protein. Tip number four, prioritizing fiber. If you go back to my videos from the first year, I found that a research paper from Burton Freeman showed that in inclusion of dietary fiber will help you in terms of maintaining your diet again because it will make you feel full and it will make the caloric deficit so much easier. Look at this video of me back in my college dorm rooms and I'm preparing pumpkin. Pumpkin is my go-to food that is super high in fiber and here on the screen I'm showing you a list of foods that are amazing and that are high in fiber because that fiber number one would keep you fuller for longer. The next thing that it would do is that it would tremendously help with your overall digestive system. So making sure that you have a source of fiber in almost each and every single meal will help tremendously in terms of implementing that caloric deficit. I would have never been able to get into the shape of my life without having fiber in my diet, especially that coming from pumpkin. So that combination with a high protein meal and high fiber is the go-to meal for me. So you'll see that I'll always have either a chicken breast or steak with a lot of pumpkin as my particular meal. And that got me in the shape of my life. I would feel extremely full. Step number five, Resistance training. Our objective isn't only to lose body fat, but the way that we build muscle is through resistance training and I want you to go heavy. What we want to do and what training actually does is that it damages the muscle fibers. Have you ever trained for the first time and felt that pain you feel in your muscle? That is a result of you breaking down and damaging your muscle fiber. What the diet does and the way you should think about it is that it lays the cement or the clay over the muscle to repair the damage you've done. Do that for one month, two months, six months to a year and you'll see all the new added tissue that you've added on your frame to be able to elicit that. If you want to build more muscle, you want to be able to lift heavier weights and go harder. So I highly recommend a resistance training program. How many times should you train in the week? At a bare minimum, I recommend three days of training. And if you're training three days, you're usually a beginner. And I recommend a full body split. So full body on day one, take a break. Full body on day two, take a break. Full body on day three, and take a break. And if you want to move that up, you can go to four sessions. I would recommend an upper body, lower body, upper body, lower body split. This way you're able to target each and every single muscle at least twice through the week, which research has shown to be the most optimal to be able to build muscle. And then if you're more so an intermediate to an advanced lifter, you can train five times in a week. This could be a full body training split. You could also do an upper body, lower body, push, pull legs routine, or you can also do the classic bro split, but I highly recommend any of the first two. And finally, you can do a six day training routine, which is push, pull legs, push, pull legs and repeat. Now, resistance training has been extremely crucial in terms of building up my ability to build muscle and to make me look leaner at higher body fat percentages. Being able to add more muscle will help you in terms of your metabolism. You burn more calories simply having more muscle tissue on your frame. You will also just look better at a higher body 
fat percentage and that's healthier for you. At the same time, to achieve that aesthetic physique, that V taper, you want to have that tissue added to your frame. What I also recommend when you're going through your resistance training program, track the weights and track the workouts and you want to make sure that you're progressively overloading. In simple terms, you want to make sure that you're doing better than last time. So if you were using 50 pound dumbbells on the bench press, your objective should be to be able to move that up to 52 pounds and do this over time, do this after two months, three months, four months, six months, and you will consistently see this improvement with your weights on your notebook with an improvement in your physique. You want to treat your body like a science experiment. You want to experiment, you want to document the results that you're getting, and you want to improve on that experiment. And then we'll move on into tip number six, stress management. Stress is extremely crucial to be able to manage because in my experience with working with people, the one major thing that can hinder a lot of people with reaching the results is stress. I'll tell you why. When you're stressed out, your cortisol levels increase. When you raise your cortisol, your body's not going to be able to do any breakdown of fat, any oxidation of fat. Lipolysis is not happening. When I was going through medical school, it became so much harder to lose weight because of stress. And I utilized different methods, which I'm going to share with you here, that helped me tremendously with stress management. But overall, it becomes extremely difficult to lose weight because of stress. You end up retaining more water because of stress. And also, when you're stressed, to be able to get that happy hormone, that serotonin, as human beings, we typically go to our comfort foods. And this is why you'll see stress will always equal you eating or eating more poorer choices of foods like donuts, pizzas, etc. I highly recommend number one is going for a walk. That to me, every time I felt stress has been a stress reliever. The second thing that changed my life tremendously is meditation and utilizing the Calm app. Now I know to many people that things woo woo and it goes hum and some people may not like it. But in my experience, when I finally gave meditation a go, I was able to, number one, exercise my mental brain. We're not only here to exercise our muscle tissue, but you also want to strengthen our brain and pop out of your thoughts, observe how you're feeling, understand and manage the way you're feeling and just accept where you're going through. But again, I highly recommend utilizing any sort of meditation. Even my mentor, who I paid tens of thousands of dollars, recommended this to me and it was life changing. Step number seven is sleep. Simply put, without getting enough sleep, you're working on hard mode. You're playing your game on hard mode and I'll tell you why. Sleep, the way you should look at it, is the way you would oil an engine. You may have a Ferrari, but if you don't oil that Ferrari engine, the engine and the car is gonna break down at some point. And sleep is that oil that you need to utilize. Why? When you're getting less sleep, your testosterone levels drop. Research has also shown that people who have less sleep typically will tend to seek out highly palatable foods like eating burgers, eating pizzas, etc. So your diet will be more difficult to be able to follow because you're just getting less sleep. Also, recovery is extremely poor, but in my experience, I've been able to move clients from six hours of sleep to eight hours of sleep without even managing their diet. And simply by making that change, they were were able to drop 20 pounds alone just by moving from six hours to eight hours of sleep and it goes to show how powerful it is and this is exactly what happens when you're sleeping more the first thing that happens is you end up making better choices with your food automatically because again you're not having that craving for highly palatable foods and another thing that I've also noticed is that you end up training a lot better your testosterone levels are much better and clients will lose that weight because they're making better decisions and also they're building more muscle just those two things alone will dramatically dramatically change the progress that you're seeing. And I'll also notice that fat loss will be two times faster because that's when your body's metabolically active, when it's burning more calories and recovering from all the things you've done throughout the day. So you need to get at least seven hours of sleep. If not more, it will make your entire journey more easy. And I've had clients on the opposite end who get five hours and their results were poor. I even had a client who came to me, he was at 12% body fat and he was stuck there for a year. Through my conversation, he said, hey Mike, I'm sleeping about four hours. I told him, please just move that up to seven. Within that week, he dropped seven pounds on the weight scale by just doing that. And now he's in single digits. I highly recommend sleeping more. Tip number eight, no cheat meals or alcohol. And what I recommend is creating your own versions. So what happens when you're having a cheat meal, you typically are 
undoing all the hard work you've done from Monday to Friday through your caloric deficit. So essentially, when you're in a caloric deficit, you're eating less to be able to tap into your fat tissue for the source of energy. And usually if you're losing about a pound of fat, it means throughout the whole week, you've created a 3,500 caloric deficit. But it's so easy to undo that by having one pizza and three cocktails. That's 3,500 calories easy. So most people end up on this hamster wheel where they'll go hard Monday to Friday, the weekend will arrive and they'll go out with friends and they'll have a cheat meal, be it burgers and pizzas or alcohol and pizzas or whichever combination of those foods and they'll undo their work. At the bare minimum, instead of losing the pound a week, you're maybe losing 0.2. Do that for an entire month and usually you'll be very discouraged from continuing at all. So this is what I highly recommend. Instead of going out to eat cheat meals, I recommend having your own version at home. Make a healthier version of pizza and usually you can add a lot of protein to it or make your own version of a burger. All my clients have Dr. Mike's Mac. It's a burger that I create for them that is the perfect macros with very little fat, but it tastes amazing. Creating your own versions of ice cream, burgers, or candies, or creating it at home will be a game changer for you because it will then make this whole lifestyle much more sustainable. And alcohol. Of course, you can get to your results having alcohol. The problem is, is that doing too much alcohol can be detrimental. So the first thing I tell all my clients Number one, we do not want to touch any cocktails because cocktails is a combination of five or six different alcohols mixed together with sugar. And on top of that, some sort of drink like Sprite or Coca-Cola that's filled with sugar. And you're having about 500 to 700 calories in one cocktail alone. What I recommend is usually having one to three shots of any spirit be it vodka or bourbon or whatever your desired taste is and mixing that with a zero calorie beverage. And for me personally, that is more than enough to get me to the destination for me to feel good and to have a buzz and to also have that social experience. Any more than that and you're overindulging. And typically if you're having four, five, six drinks within a night, you're typically not gonna make good decisions. And that's where the real problem starts after. You're not gonna make good decisions after you drink. You're probably gonna go out and order food. And then in the morning, because you're highly likely to have a hangover, you're going to have a day that's a write-off in terms of your diet, you're not gonna get the steps that you need and you're not going to exercise the way you're supposed to. So this is exactly why last year, on my 30th birthday, which has almost been a year from now, I decided to not have another sip of alcohol the rest of my life. I haven't had any since, and I don't miss it. And I am in the shape of my life as a result. Again, what I recommend to most is just stick to about three shots. And if you're a person who loves wine, I highly recommend no more than three glasses of wine. Tip number nine, troubleshooting your metabolism. This is so common, and I'll tell you how common it is. I speak to close to 100 people a month who wanna work with me. And and I will always hear that they're eating 1,600 calories at 30% body fat, or even 1,500 I've heard as low as 500 calories at 30% body fat. And the logic is that if you're truly eating 1,500 calories and you're at 30% body fat, you're not losing weight, it means you're not in a caloric deficit. So what does that mean? You need to be in a deeper deficit. So what, are you gonna eat 1,000 calories? No, it's so low, it's unsustainable. So the same analogy I use with my clients and when I speak to them is that if you're doing a math equation and you make a mistake throughout the entire equation, you're always gonna get the wrong answer. So what to do? Start from the beginning, start over and do it right, and then work your way down the right way so you can finally get the right answer. So to troubleshoot your metabolism, I highly recommend spending anywhere from two to four weeks at maintenance calories. You will feel more energetic, you'll be moving more, you'll be building more muscle, and you'll be boosting your metabolism for about two to four weeks. And then after that, you can put yourself in a slight caloric deficit. So let's say you were at 3000 calories for about two to four weeks and your weight went up, but no problem. You're, at, you're fat already. And I'm just gonna be honest with you. Then go to 2800 and see if we see any changes with the weight skill after a week. And then continue doing so and decrease it slightly to 2700. And you're finally gonna be able to get to 10% and eating a realistic amount of calories. And I say that not to be mean. I say that, that if you're not seeing the results you want 
one and you already feel that it's unsustainable. The best thing to do is to start over and to do it the right way. And this is why so many people decide to work with me because I can truly guide them and I can give them the right advice so they can make the right decisions to be able to go through. But I highly recommend troubleshooting, eat and maintain this for about two weeks to a month. One month is even better. And then from there, create your caloric deficit and keep on decreasing. I did the same with Omar. I took Omar to the appropriate calories that he had to be in the beginning of his journey. And at the end of his journey, he has a six pack. He was able to build muscle as a result of eating more food and being at a higher protein intake. And now he's having a full six pack with no problems whatsoever. So if you're in a position where you're eating low calories, you're not seeing the results you want, I highly recommend troubleshooting your metabolism. Tip number 10 is track your progress and to stay consistent. Have you ever been blindfolded and you know the area around you is empty, but you're so afraid to walk at your normal pace because logically your brain is fearful of falling over. And it's the same analogy when you're not tracking your progress. You might be seeing the results you want, but because you're not tracking it, you're unsure how far you are from reaching your destination. So I highly recommend tracking your progress and this is what I mean. Number one, I want you to weigh in daily. Let's say weighing in daily doesn't feel good. You don't like how it makes you feel. At least weigh in once a week at the same time doing the same thing. What this will allow you to see is if your weight is trending. And the word is not that you're losing weight, but that the weight is trending in the right direction. So after about two to three weeks, let's say you're at 200 pounds, the week passes and you're at 194. The second week passes and you're at 192. The third week passes, you're at 190. The trend shows that you're losing weight, which is great. If it's the opposite, it then it will tell you hey we need to make some adjustments so tracking your weight the second thing is I want you to take progress photos in the same location at the same time because although like Omar I wasn't seeing a tremendous change in the weight scale but his photos on a week-to-week -week basis was changing so much and just that information visually can tell me that hey we're doing fine and we're getting the results we need we don't need to make any changes it's very hard to be objective but taking photos will allow you to compare and you can truly say hey I see this change here or not or you can even ask your friend's advice. The third thing that I highly recommend is also using a tape measurement. You can get this Renfo tape or any tape measurement and track every two weeks. You can measure your shoulder width, your chest size, you can measure your midsection, you can measure your legs and your glutes. And doing this every two weeks can also give us additional information that the weight scale will not. Because you could be losing fat and building muscle, so you could be at 200 pounds, you could have gained a pound of muscle and lost a pound of fat and being still at 200 pounds. However, after a month, if you see that you've decreased your waist size by two inches, but your shoulder size is increased, increased by an inch. This is a positive indicator that you're building muscle and losing fat. So tracking your progress, utilizing a tape measurement is fantastic. And those are the three things that I highly recommend to track your progress amongst many things. But I'll leave the video here. I hope you enjoyed this video and that I gave you information that you can take away. But these are the 10 proven methods that will help you to get to 10% body fat. Comment down below your age, weight, height, gender, how many times you want to be training, all the information I'll need to be able to give you your calories and macros. All I ask in return is a gentle thumbs up. If you're new, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.